Welcome to Nineworks Radio and my garage. Uh, something a little different. I'm not Lee Sibley, I'm Andy Brooks. This is my 1978 SC, and today we're going to be doing some technical bits by adjusting the 915 gearbox. I've enlisted the help of Chris and Tony from Right Tune. Hope you enjoy. Chris from Right Tune, along with your dad. Good to see you both. We've got we've got the Oracle on it today. Yeah, I need he needs to take over in this instance. <laughs> so uh what we're gonna do, this is a little bit of um a new style how-to, I guess, video for nine works. The first job that we've um picked is setting up the the gear shifter linkage on a 915 gearbox. So how to adjust that. Um so there's a few things that can affect that, aren't there, Tony? So uh, there's various wear points in the assembly. There are, yeah. Obviously, the obvious one is the is the joint itself. Yeah, where where it's joined, where it fits onto the uh, selector shaft of the gearbox. Yeah, there's some want of a better word, plastic bushes in there which can wear. Yeah. Um. So that's the first place. S secondly, in the gear lever itself the bottom of the gear lever there's a ball and that yeah. fits into a plastic for what the better word again it might not be some sort of plastic type material fits into that the bottom of the gear lever fits into this uh plastic socket that goes into the a metal housing which is attached to the main sh uh operating shaft yeah so if that Bush, if that plastic bush is worn, there's another place that can affect the gear, the, the select, the gear selection. So there's two places to look at. And if it's done a lot of miles, I would suggest you change that bush anyway, because it's not very expensive and it's yeah. very straightforward to do that. So once you've got, a, a, you're happy that you've lost all your play in the, those two mechanical parts. The, the How other about place, the um, the bush that's on the rod. Yeah, the that the one where it supports it. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea to change that as well if it is badly worn. Um, but that's the least likely of the three, I guess. That tends to give less problems generally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't change them as much. We don't as, change as, them. as we would change that. Uh, what is just the, yeah, the yeah. universal yeah. joint thing is you, the thing that's normally the most problematic. Yeah, you can't get the gear linkage right unless there's a problem inside the gearbox, which and is obviously you, another another factor. Yeah, if you're having gear selection problems, changing those two bushes and the UJ at the back is probably the first thing to do, rather rather than take gearbox apart provided that it is obviously set up correctly yes yeah, yeah absolutely. That's what go yeah. through now, isn't it? so there's a there's a you can do a few aftermarket things can't you with the um with the coupler um you can either replace the the bushes and um, replace the whole coupler um and there's a number of different replacements for those bushes you can either get sort of um like neoprene ones or there's uh brass bushes that have been put in do you recommend any of those no i don't i'll use the pull one um the fitting the brass ones i don't recommend that a it hasn't got any they, they're not elongated the holes for so yeah. the rod do that in there which it needs to do yeah and secondly it'll transmit noise and gearbox up the up yeah select the shaft to the to inside to the car and it'll be you, you will hear more gearbox noise than normal yes yeah now i've tried that and i agree with those sentiments um it was noisy and also felt that the whole mechanism felt a bit sort of stiff it wasn't very free um it was a little bit of sort of binding in that um joint because you don't have the little elongation in the, they, in the holes they don't like porsche gearboxes don't like the, the, the mechanism to be very stiff yeah under some circumstances, if you're running high horsepower engines and you try to uh, take all the play up out of the mechanism for the selector, it 
because the engine and gearbox are moving about in a car, it can make it jump out of gear. Got you. Yeah. When the engine moves, it pulls the engine gearbox with it and it will pull it out of gear. Yeah. So, so it needs that sort of slight. It needs, it needs a bit of slump, not yeah. excessive, because then you can't get the gears, but yeah. it needs some movement there to allow it to move about when the engine and gearbox are moving about in something that's only 250, 300 horsepower. It's probably okay if you start going on than that. Yeah. Don't like it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a balancing act with that sort of thing is you want a little bit of slop, but not too much because that can then lead to difficulty. So yeah, it's a little bit of a difficult. So the one. way that Porsche got it designed, it works. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. If you try to re-engineer it; it generally doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've um, let's sort of hypothesise, I guess, and say that we've uh, we've done a bit of um, maintenance. We've sorted out our bushes. Yeah. Uh, we've put it all back together. And we're now at the point where we need to adjust it. Uh, we've obviously taken off the little access panel that's underneath the carpet, held with four, four screws. Screws, yeah, yeah. And we've got access to our to our coupler. What's the the first stage of? Um... So obviously we've got the we've got the the UJ fixed to the selector shaft of the gearbox with the little tapered. Um screw grub screw grub screw yeah yeah and we've got it on the shaft with the clamp with the eight mil bolt so yep. what you do then is you 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 turn the selector shaft of the gearbox mm -hmm. all the way and in neutral make sure it's in neutral yeah i'll state this but it's obvious not with the engine running yeah <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> to turn the turn that get hold of the, the joint and turn the shaft anti-clockwise all the way to the as far as it'll go with your hand okay so this is towards the driver's side on a right hand drive car correct yeah yeah and then it really needs turbo to do it to be honest it's difficult on your own get the gear lever itself into the central position so it's in the middle of the gate yeah and over as far to the left as you can get it so between first and second yes yeah in the neutral gate yeah in the neutral gate and then tighten the clamp up and that should be a first and that's that should it. be a that's it <laughs> that's what it yeah. says in the manual <laughs> yeah um, but as, as i said before you probably need to do a bit of um fine tuning yes because then then once you've done that select fifth gear yeah. and when it's in fifth gear there should be just a permissible about little bit of side play if there isn't you've got too far one you know you turned it a bit too much one way okay so that's um you've got like um i i can show it actually here i've got the a gear leap in front of me um when that's selected over to fifth we can see there that's yeah. fifth selected there. So that there should be a little bit. It shouldn't be that the the bit that's welded to the side of the gear lever. Yeah, shouldn't be sort of touching. Well, it should be touch. Yeah, it, it should be a, just. There should be just a slight bit of play. Bit of play, there, got you. Tiny, yeah, tiny, yeah. So, it's, tiny. so when you're in fifth, it's not. Um, it's not using that. So that when you go across into fifth and go like that, it, it's not you're not having to force that that metal that black metal bit up past the yeah the it's, aluminium housing. It goes in nicely. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, a top little tip on sort of how to just finesse it, I guess. Yeah, it, yeah. So that it's yeah, so that the shift's nice and smooth, and you're not forcing it in. Yeah. Um, what um what sort of things as you're shifting gear, uh, you've done all the adjustments and what sort of things are you, um, if something like it's difficult to get into second and first, what what are you what are you thinking that's wrong? What's not quite right? Well, you haven't quite got it in the right. But you've got it too far across one way, so that yeah. So, okay, so just undoing that eight millimeter bolt again and 
yeah and just, just having a little play tiny, a tiny movement of it you know we're yeah. talking a millimeter it, rotational yeah. movement it's, it's, it's often a lot, lot of it's a lot of trial and error to be yeah. honest i mean that's what i said you can set it up exactly as it says in the manual yeah sometimes it works first time, first time. invariably it doesn't and you have to do this little bit of, little fine bit of tweak movement of the yeah that's so I think why it, i advise you unless you're you've got a problem and you need to change those components do not take it off the spline bit take the grub screw out if you want to do something to the um if you want to take the engine and box out for some okay reason, clutch you're doing yeah. the clutch. so so top tip when you're when you if you're removing the um engine and gearbox is not to undo the eight millimeter bolt on the cup exactly. front of the no. coupling it's to take the the grub screw yeah. out of the back of the coupling um yeah. because that is there is no adjustment in that it can only be in one position so yeah, yeah. if you take if you take that out then you you'll not need to go through the the setup the no. setup situation that would be really um frustrating, frustrating yeah to get it okay so I think what I've taken away from our chat today is in yeah, in the textbooks, um, it sounds very simple, but in fact, it's uh, it's a little bit of a, not a black art, but no. it's something that needs um, an experienced set of fingers on it that will just tweak it and just get it just so. It, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And some patience. And sometimes... <laughs> yeah. You know, if you've got worn synchros in the gearbox, it doesn't matter how well you get the linkage set up. It's, it's still not going to change gear nicely. It's not going to change. Synchros yeah. are worn, but you'd know that driving it. You'd know if the synchros are worn really because it's going to make horrible noise going into gear or it will jump out of gear. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Okay. So what are the leading, those are the leading things that you should be looking at for worn synchros is, um, it makes noise when it goes into gear. So when you're trying to get into gear, you get a little bit that, of a. Crunch. That's right. Because the, when you when you select a gear, there's a the synchro is like a a band around the gear itself. Which when you're moving a selector, um, I don't know what they call it. They uh, I call it a sliding sleeve. Porsche don't call it that. So it goes up a, like a ramp. And yeah, and it it breaks the gear. It's effectively you're breaking the gear, so that the dog teeth, mm. which are on the sink on the sliding sleeve, engage into the gear to lock it into lock it into gear. And if well, that, they sometimes call the synchro a break band. Don't yeah, if that band, that synchro band, is worn excessively, it's not slowing the gear down enough. Yeah, and so when you're pushing it in, all those teeth are rushing by each other, going. Pfft, crunch 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 that's what yeah. makes that noise because it's not allowing the gear to slow enough the worst thing for one of these 915 gearboxes is to is to try and beat the synchro yeah and it's not it's not a fast changing gearbox you can't change gear fast in one of those and people fit short shift kits well that exacerbates that problem mm -hmm. because it means you can get it into gear you can almost beat the synchro yeah you want to be changing gear slowly and when i say slowly i don't mean like, you know i don't mean like pathetically slowly i mean change gear feel the gear in with your hand rather than yeah. suddenly ramming it in yeah because this will cause the synchro to wear quickly sure and then it, that will end up wearing the dog too and you end up having to rebuild the gearbox and then I don't know the the very latest gearboxes, uh, which aren't ZF. Um, they're much better, but we're talking nine one five nine zero one. Yeah, it's part oh. it's, it's part of the character of using them, isn't it? You've got to. Well, yeah, you just you've got, got to work be, with the gearbox. You still change than, gear quite quickly, but don't yeah. try and rush it, basically, because you'll yeah. just end up giving yourself route down the line and. Absolutely. And the worst thing I say is to fit a short shift kit because that makes it, that I think exacerbates the problem mm -hmm. and uh, uh, speeds up the wear. Yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, I'll own up now and say that I have a short shift in mind, but I take my time, right. and 
understand understand the engineering reasons for it i i've got mine because i like the way it positions the the lever but yeah. i still take the time to to shift engage the gear yeah so i've got some mechanical um sympathy, sympathy. i guess is the word yeah um in the way that i use it so well that's yeah. fine but you know a lot of lots people of people don't, don't. yeah and yeah you end up getting a problem sooner than you would do of course yeah absolutely great stuff okay i think we've covered all the bases there if you're happy yeah 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 so i think we've got everything that we need um thank you very much guys thank you good to see you good to see you as well and cheers good. yeah thank you to tony and chris from right tune for helping me to adjust the gear lever on this sc it's running really nicely now um if you enjoyed this episode please like subscribe and comment and uh, we'll see you for the next episode soon.